you came here to begin with? Sure. So, um, I grew up in a really small town in Ohio, first of all. I grew up in Appalachia, um, and my family moved to Virginia Beach when I was 14. Um, and uh, I'm also a cancer survivor um, as of 2010, um, and I'm a transfer student to William & Mary from Tidewater Community College, um, and I came here in the fall of 2012. So. Okay, and that was your sophomore year? That was my junior year. Junior year, already. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. And what attracted you to William & Mary? I was very interested in the very academic climate of the school, um, and I knew that William & Mary had a great linguistics program, which at the time of transferring was meant to be my focus. Mm -hmm. um, that's changed since I came here, definitely, but um, that was my original reason for coming here. So what did you study while you were here? Um, so I've been studying French and Francophone studies as well as linguistics. Um, You're and a double major? Yeah, a double major. Um, and it started out with just linguistics mm -hmm. and then I found out that if I did a summer study abroad that I could do both. Um, and so I've ended up double majoring and then over time my focus has really shifted from linguistics to French and Francophone studies. So you were in Montpellier, is that right? Yes. How I was that? What did you do there? Loved Montpellier. Um, I went there this past summer, um, 2013, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to live with a host family and go to a local university, um, and it was such a wonderful experience. And I did a research project there about the LGBT community, mm -hmm. which was very interesting. Um, and it was definitely the type of research that I don't think I would have been able to do had I just stayed here. So what was the question that you were asking? I really wanted to look into the socio-political, socio-historical reasons why Montpellier had become such a gay-friendly city mm -hmm. in France and um, why the kind of the opinion around France was that it was the San Francisco okay. of, of Europe. And so I really wanted to look into why people thought that was. And how did you go about answering the question? Well, like, what I... What kinds of sources did you... Right, have? right, yeah. So I, um, I made some contacts while I was actually over here because I had a few friends in Montpellier. And so they put me in contact with some of their friends. And I also contacted the Gay and Lesbian Pride Center mm -hmm. in Montpellier. And they provided me with some contacts as well. And so I did kind of a survey to see what people felt like the reasons were that Montpellier had become such an accepting city. Um, and I did interviews one-on-one -on -one with a few individuals, just asking them um, about their personal experiences in the city, possible experiences with homophobia, um, and their kind of view of the um, gay-friendly climate of the city in general. Did you also do research in specific archives? Or specific Definitely. Um, they have an amazing library in Montpellier. Um, and so I did, I did a lot of research there. And a lot of it involved um, this recent political past of the city beginning in about the 1970s. Um, they elected a socialist mayor, mm -hmm. Georges Fresh, mm -hmm. And that really put the city on a track to a very, um, very left-leaning um, political climate and so uh it's it's very interesting how the city has changed since that time and the city's become very supportive of the gay community george fresh actually created um lesbian and gay pride mm -hmm. uh and so the city has um really embraced the gay community since then so what was the answer to your research question in the end did it really have to do with this history or were right. there other factors it did a lot have to do with this history beginning in the 1970s. Um, there's also this factor um, that Montpellier was a very young, very educated city. Uh, about one-fourth of the population of Montpellier is university age or university attending. So it's a very young, very educated population. Um, IBM also has a research center in Montpellier, and they do a lot of research in public transportation and um, and water uh, usage, and so I, th you can see that it's really a very, um, very educated, very conscious mm -hmm. population that lives there. Um, something though that I thought was very interesting, which I was not expecting necessarily, was that in the interviews that I did with people, they people really voiced their um, their kind of rejection for a social LGBT community, and they related more to a political LGBT community. And so they said um, 
they didn't really like to frequent these gay bars and gay saunas and gay places of business um, because they felt like that put them in a box and that defined them by one aspect of their identity. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was very interesting because I it kind of contrasted for me with the U.S. where we kind of like, we have these communities of people um, who come together f socially for strength and support mm -hmm. where they, in France, it was kind of a more universalist um, perspective where people like to be viewed as part of the community as a whole and not defined by this one characteristic of their identity. This is really interesting. Yeah, I loved it. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you about was your experience with the film festival here on campus because mm -hmm. you were also active yes. and helped right. organize that. Yeah, it was very exciting. I actually had the opportunity to be the first intern for the French and Francophone mm -hmm. Film Festival which was such a wonderful opportunity. And I got to work very closely with Magali Compon. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got actually a lot of hands-on experience with um, marketing and PR. Like I got to promote festival products and ticket sales within the Williamsburg and Hampton Roads area. Um, I got to take control of social media outlets um, and communicate with the people who were coming to see the films. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a wonderful experience. Do you think you actually acquired specific skills? Yeah, that definitely. You might use in the future. Definitely, like I, I was never really, I never really done anything PR related, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that was a uh, really great experience for me, um, especially getting in touch more with the faculty here, um, which I've done in other ways as well. But that was um, also a great facet of my work there. Uh, it was really great to give back to the to the French department um, in general because I've I've so enjoyed my time here, and I thought it was really great to get the community involved a little bit more. So, what happens next? Next, you're about to graduate. Yes, graduating very soon. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> So right now the plan is to go to France and teach English for at least a year. I've applied to the TAPIF program, mm -hmm. which is the teaching asso uh, um, assistantship program in France. And um, where do you want to end up ideally? What finally or place? with the the regions for? Well, you gave them right. specific preferences. What are you hoping for? So I put three regions down, um, and my first choice was actually Bretagne because I have, a, I have a good friend who goes to ONS, the branch of which is in Rennes, that he attends. And so I thought it would be nice to be near someone I know, but still have it be a student city and kind of affordable because it doesn't pay that well. <laughs> but um, the second region, region that I chose was Lorraine, mm -hmm. and third, um, La Réunion. So kind of diverse there. Um, and do you have experience in teaching? Or will this all I be do, there? I do. Um, yeah, I actually participate in a uh, program here on campus called CPALS, which is the Conversational Partnership for Adult Learners, and I teach English as a second language. So, so you actually would start off in yeah. fourth year. Yeah, and I've been taking yeah. some classes to prepare me, and um, yeah, so fingers crossed. I'm really excited about the possibility.